Senior Advocates of Nigeria, uh, Femi Falono, says that Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State lacks the moral right to speak at the 60th Nigerian Bar Association Conference. According to Falono, El Rufai has a penchant of disobeying court orders right from when he was a minister of the Federal Capital Territory. He explains that El Rufai's action was inconsistent with, with the rules of MBA. The activist and lawyer stated this in a letter to the MBA's Technical Committee Conference uh, Planning Committee here as well. Arufai was billed to be one of the speakers for the NBA conference scheduled for August 26th to 29th of 2020. However, his inclusion led to outrage and backlash, even on social media. Earlier on, on our breakfast show, we spoke to Evans Ufele, who is a legal practitioner, on this matter. My reaction is that uh, removing Arufai's name and some other persons as speaker for the 2020 annual general conference of the MBA is one that is expected. Expected because the MBA is not like the Nigerian government. The MBA listening to lawyers. When lawyers raise concern, and these concerns are cogent and they are reasonable, and is backed up by a petition, and the same petition have gathered reasonable signatures of lawyers who are dissatisfied about the character and person of the speaker or someone who is expected to speak at the conference, then um, the, the move is justified. Mm. Justified because uh, it is not a case of uh, ROFI committing an offense somewhere and he needed fair hearing. It's a case that is clear before all and sundry, that this is a governor that has not been able to manage the affairs of his state as it relates to security, as it relates to issues of uh, governance and security. The constitution is clear. Section 14, subsection 2 of 1999 says, this hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people through which government derives a legitimacy, that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. If the security and welfare of the people is the of government, then any governor, any leader, any president, any local government chairman, any senator, any House of Rep member who is unable to provide that as a leader, who is unable to provide security as a leader, should not be allowed to speak anywhere in the world. Mm. Because you have actually nothing to tell anyone. All right. Uh, before... as a person, have nothing to say to lawyers All right. at the NBA conference. Barrister, if I may interject to you, uh, sorry. The governor had accused, you know, the professional body like NBA of not being professional, by not listen, by listening to just one side of the argument, you know, before taking a decision. Isn't that a point for the NBA to now to rescind its decision? You see, it, I, I just explained to you that... There's a, there's a sense in which he will want to come up with that point. Okay, but this is not a case of uh, him committing an offense or engage, being engaged in a contract uh, that went bad and somebody has written a petition and he needs to reply. This is a case of insecurity that everybody is aware of. MBA and the leadership of MBA, Nigerians are aware of the killings in Southern Kaduna that has been left unabated. So at some point, as, as some time ago, he, he, he said that he has gone to pay the attacker so that they will not attack again. I mean, that is a governor, that is the executive governor of it, the chief security officer of a state. You understand? So with this incapacity and incompetence, we're not saying, we're not saying that uh, he should not uh, talk about national issues. We're not saying he should not uh, contribute his quota to the development of Nigeria. We are saying that on security matters and as regards the NBA General Conference, it does not have the moral rectitude, it does not have the local standard. I'm, I'm afraid that it does uh, not have there what seems it takes to be as a person to contribute to that conference. All right, uh, Barrister, there seems to be a problem with your con connection, but it's uh, a bit better now. Let's try and look at possible merit in the agitations by the protesting lawyers, you know, accusing the governor of infractions in human rights activities, you know, which is what you're trying to explain, which is on the basis that the decision was taken and failure to stop the killings in southern Kaduna. Um, you are saying that this is a valid allegation. 
so in, are we going to see the MBA taking such decision for other leaders moving forward in Nigeria, irrespective of who uh, you are, that the MBA will stand out strongly and come out to say, no, uh, we're not taking this? That is, that is the objective of MBA. The objective of MBA originally, before it was messed up, originally, okay, is to stand in between the gap between the people and the government. Just like the press, empowered by Section 22 of the Constitution, MBA have, was originally created for the purpose of bringing what you call equity and justice, and then reviving the spirit of the judiciary and the last hope of the common man. Okay, so, but um, it's going to be so for other, other leaders also who will be doing, because this is a veritable feedback for the governor. If I were the governor, I would sit down to reflect on my stewardship on what I have done, because this is a good feedback. Because in Nigeria, we have leaders who believe that they are bigger than the society they are supposed to meet, who are not there to serve, but to, you know, uh, behave arrogantly and act as if they are, be, are above the law. So the MBA is setting a standard for everyone to know, for everyone to understand that if you are not diligent in your job, if you are incompetent, you have incapacity, you cannot, okay? And this is a call to every other professional bodies and organization. To look out to the kind of people they bring to speak at their events and at their conferences. By the time we begin to do this consciously, our leaders will begin to sit up. Because before now, what we do is to invite them, give them awards, give them chips and title, give them all kinds of uh, largesse for their inability to manage the society. Mm -hmm. and reward them for that. But now we're saying that it's no longer business as usual. Right. MBA is saying that you cannot do this because of your track record. You have a very uh, bad track record as a governor. You've not been able to if I may manage interject your you. and all that. So, so, Barista, I mean, if very, I may very, interject very you, on, based on what you said, before you re while responding to the question, you mentioned that uh, MBA is now taking a stand before, th th that's what the MBA is meant to be before it was messed up, using your words. Are we seeing a different kind of leadership uh, now? And what we suggest that there's going to be a sustenance of this sort of leadership in the MBA without just focusing on the issue of uh, the governor of Kaduna State alone? Yes, this is this is a precedent. This is a precedent. We are laying a precedent. I'm afraid we where you down. are is quite. Uh, we we are struggling with your sound. Yes, I said this. This is a precedent. We are going back to MBA as it used to be in the days of old. Okay, where the MBA will take decisions based on equity, justice, and what is fair, so that it is. Um, clear whoever have not lived up to standards okay because the, the mba conference is not just for lawyers we invite non-lawyers professionals government parasitas traditional rulers and all that because in the conference we look at society we look at issues of society we provide solution to the issues of society and we make recommendations to the presidency that is what the mba conference is about so we will not have someone that does not have the capacity to begin to make contribution because on several occasions he has gone about this insecurity in Kaduna State with a new level of intolerance and arrogance. Whenever he asks question about the killing, he goes defensive, he creates problem and all that. So such kind of pe person should not be allowed to come close to the conference whatsoever because the conference is solution based. The conference is about society. The conference is about justice. The conference is about progress. All right. So we need progressive-minded people to come and speak there. The NBA leadership is not foolish to have removed him. All based right. on let, the let petition. Just, based, okay. and, and, and if they have not removed him from speaking, if they have not removed him, on the day he's supposed to speak, lawyers may have, would have revolted. Uh, and that brings me to my question. That brings me to my follow-up question to you. 
if this is the situation, this is the position of the MBA, why did they not look at all of this possible uh, circumstance before even choosing him? Is it a question of the MBA also on its part may not have thought it through or may not have checked with other lawyers before the selection? What is the process of the selection well, of the kind well, of the, people that will have to speak on such, um, a, a, such a conference by the MBA? Yeah, that, that, that selection was actually made by the ESCO. Okay, the MBA and then the the committee on the conference, the committee on, on the annual general conference 2020. You understand? So there are not so much lawyers in, in, in the ESCO and in the committee. So if they are taking a decision and they've unveiled the speakers, I don't see anything wrong with that. If they are taking a decision and they unveil the speakers to the larger society in the professional body, and lawyers are saying that on the basis of the following. We have lawyers in South Carolina for Christ's sake. We have lawyers in Carolina for Christ's sake. They, we, we, we also, from, we, from the South, we also see what is going on. You understand? So uh, by the time the larger body comes up and say, no, this person will not uh, fly. It's like the president nominating someone as a minister, OK? Mm -hmm. And then the person will have to go through the National Assembly. Going through National Assembly is like going through the entire country because the people from National Assembly are representative extraction from all the constituencies in Nigeria. That is the same way it happened. So when, when they were unveiled to us, we have to approve. We have to look at who and who is speaking and who is not. Who is not. Would you say that uh, if a, 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 a proposed minister uh, is disqualified by the National Assembly, would you say that the president is not uh, thinking through? You understand? Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's a selection. It was presented to the larger society of professional bodies, lawyers. And then this man was picked out, not one person, not two signatures, not three signatures, not four signatures, and all that. So mm -hmm. uh, the best thing is that it uh, should not be allowed at all. Because even if it's allowed, on the particular day, there might be a revolt. All right. As so we will, so. we, will, we will move on then. Uh, thank you so very much, Barista Ufeli, for your contributions there. And do keep safe as well. Thank you.